it's time to get ship shape and fancy free in the piratical point and click comedy, Nelly Cootalot and the Foul Fleet. Does it fly high or is it just nautical nonsense? Hello and welcome to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and in today's video I'm taking a look at Nelly Cootalot and the Foul Fleet from Alistair Beckett King. But before we set sail on this review, if you love pointing and clicking, then be sure to do so right over that subscribe button there, as I create 100% adventure game videos. And whilst you're poised ready, why not click the like button too, as it really helps the video out with the YouTube algorithm. Arr. You may be forgiven for thinking that Nelly Cootalot is yet another game riding on the 30 year old coattails of Guybrush and Co. But the only similarities I can find are the fact that they both deal with pirates, that's it. Our heroine Nelly is a red headed Geordie lass with gumption, grit and literal ineptitude. No game I've played in the past few years has had me laughing out loud as much as Nelly. And this is all down to both developer Alistair Beckett King, who is a professional comedian, and his partner, Nelly's voice actress, who is also apparently called Nelly Cootalot. There you go. The northern accent added together with Alistair's comedy chops makes for an unforgettable heroine. It's a fairly comical plot too. Captain Bloodbeard, who is our mentor and just happens to be a ghost, tells us of another pirate, Baron Widebeard, who is planning on seeking out secret treasure and in doing so has hypnotised all the birds, hence the title The Foul Fleet. The evil harbour master Van Sant also sticks his oar in and tries to ruin Nelly's day too. It's basically a plot to dangle brilliant one-liners from as ridiculous characters are stacked up one by one. For a start, there's our sidekick Sebastian the Bird, voiced by Doctor Who legend Tom Baker. A few puzzles require us to utilise him and he's also a great sounding board for if we get stuck. He's available on the majority of screens for hints and the hints given are clear and precise, to the point where he pretty much tells us what to do. The cast of characters mainly serves as a conduit for a single puzzle and I think every character you interact with is helpful in one way and then they're done, except for on a small handful of occasions. The majority of the characters also come at the game from a comedy angle and it really works, it's a very funny game. There's a healthy amount to do in the game too and it leaves us up to us to decide in what order to do it. It feels like it's split into three, maybe four sections, with each section having several puzzles in it to progress. For the most part, the tasks at hand lend us to do one of three or four things. For example, we have to convince the mayor of a town to give us a pass to leave the location, but he wants us to go and do three things first. It's up to us in which order we do these tasks, or trials. The three trials! Okay, so there may be a little more Monkey Island in this than first seems. A large part of the game is set in this small town with its buccaneering inhabitants, and so it's really handy to have a map to fast track from one side of the island to the other. Kudos! The classic point and click puzzles are on the easier side of things, but there are one or two more niggly ones that had me hunting around a little, but there's nothing here that could stump you and leave you randomly trying objects on things. There is an inventory and it's nicely tucked away at the bottom of the screen, which leaves plenty more room for us to investigate on screen. There's never more than around 10 or so things we carry, so there's little room for being overwhelmed with stuff. Alongside the point and click puzzles, there are a handful of mini games, and these I feel can be hit or miss. The shooting range was fun, as was working out a riddle involving shipping docks, but the claw machine and the operation games were a tad tedious. Still, the good does outweigh the bad here. It's described itself as a hand-drawn game, and it has a beautiful, charming look. I'm no techie, but there are definite touches of 3D in there too, perhaps 2.5D? Whatever it is, it was a colourful, bright delight. And musically, there are one or two funny songs included, and if you want to know the entire plot, just head straight to the credits, as it pretty much spells it out for us in song form. I must state also, and I wasn't aware of this before I started playing, that this is, in fact, a sequel. You definitely don't need to have played the first game, Nelly Cootalot Spoonbeaks Ahoy, which you can pick up for less than two quid on Steam, but it does reference past events half a dozen times or so. 
I'm delighted I played Nelly Kutalot, the Feral Fleet, as it was a belly laugh of a game all the way through. I adore Nelly and her dry, candid replies, her northern gab and the journey she embarks on. What a hoot! You can get yourself a copy of Nelly Kutalot, the Foul Fleet from Humble in the link below. If you buy it from here, it helps out both the developer, charity and myself, but it costs you no more. Thanks also to Application Systems Heidelberg for the review copy of the game. And if you've enjoyed this review, then please be sure to hit like and subscribe for more adventure game videos. And until next time, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it is you are doing right now, and take care. Hello, what's happening? My name's Lucas. I'm selling this fine leather. Hey, that's enough of that. <laughs>